Good evening, my friends. <sighs> Welcome to Environmental Coffee House. Hello, everybody out there. Chicken Patty. And Wade. Hi, Wade and Philip Blair. Human. I'm here again. I'm here again. But if I don't keep myself busy, I go out of my mind. And, uh... I'm going to tell you how this started. How this started today. Hello, Shutsy. Hello, everybody. It started because I <clears throat> saw this article on uh, cruise ships today, and it was suicides. Suicides on cruise ships kind of made me well pretty sad to read the stories these are people from all over the world that are that work on these cruise ships all over the world and the uh the sad part was they were stuck in their rooms could come out like they were in prison and these are the workers these are not the uh they are not the people that uh, were cruise participants, you know, they didn't buy a ticket. And so it got me to thinking, well, first of all, how fucking sad. And I'm not going to put up that. Well, I guess I could show you, but I'm not reading the whole thing. It's just too damn. It's from Bloomberg, believe it or not. And it's just, it's just too damn depressing. But, uh, the thing that happened was people were committing suicide and here's who committed suicide well there's pictures of them and it just it just it knocked me off like today it just it knocked me right off because i think depression is something that is so big during the holidays so many people have are depressed so many people get depression and then there's these people that were stuck on a on a cruise ship because they couldn't get off they worked there no coffee tonight i need water they worked there and they were expats or you know they lived all over the world and when lockdown happened they couldn't get home and these four, Joseph and Mariah and uh, you, uh, Eugenia and Kenix, they took their lives on these ships. They felt so hopeless. And it's just awful. It was just awful. But from that, I went into the um, suicide thing. After that, I went into the pollution thing. The pollution thing is suicide. You know, we're just committing suicide on, on in our on our planet. Are we not? And it was the employees, not the people. These were the employees, Poppy, and after the guests left, they were stuck. And they were basically stuck because they they had to go home and home was all over the world. And and many countries had already had the lockdown put in place so be that as it may it started me out on this and I decided you know I'd I'd do this piece tonight hello Mark how are you Mark is nice he's out delivering boxes of food that otherwise would have gone out gone in the landfill that's a beautiful thing so I think we all know how disgusting cruise ships are and I have been on one, and it happened to be a family cruise that I went on uh, long years ago. Years ago, the whole family went on it, and I, I didn't like it. I personally didn't like it. You know, what? it wasn't for me. It was probably, I felt like getting into the cruise, I felt like I was in a cattle bin, and everybody had to walk through the metal lines, you know, and I just, uh, I think I remember at the time, maybe I started booing, you know, not booing, mooing, moo, 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 we're getting on the ship, 
moo moo. So I was moo mooing. And uh, it just made me decide to, let's go for this. Let's look at the cruise ship industry tonight. Tonight before New Year's Eve. And for me, and for a lot of us, the year sucked, bittersweet, you know, ending up pretty lousy, but it's the way it is. And I'm here and I got you. So I'm going to put on a little bit of mood music tonight, like I started with. I'm like getting into these little, you know, little pieces of music I, I can, uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to get. So I'll put on another one. And we'll start the show. Well, I've already started the show, but okay. It's a heavy duty. <laughs> well, I'm going to put it in the background. Actually, I think I'll put another one on. Wait, let's hear this one. Yeah. Why not? Music makes the world go around. Music is life. Water is life. Music is life. All right. So. Yeah, Poppy's right. It felt like being cattle because you're walking in like that into the cruise line and it was icky. I didn't like it. Like I said, I did not like it at all. I felt like I was just pushed in with just too many people and, you know, it wasn't, it's not like, well, cruises, you're not in any natural world. It's the world of the unnatural. I don't think I like this background song. Let's see if I got something nice and nice and mellow. Let's see, guys. Yeah, here we go. Yep, there we go. Night before New Year's Eve, the end of this rotten ass 2020. Yep. And uh, last night, Jennifer and I did our 2020 show. And here we go. So, oh, uh, let's see. What are you guys saying? Did you go on a cruise? It did suck. Not to mention my love boat just hit the rocks. Yours did. Well, mine's hitting the rocks. I want it to hit the rocks. It's the way it is. So we all, I, I'm sorry, Schutzi, for you. But, you know, when it ain't no love boat anymore, it's time to hit the rocks. I think it is. I think it's time to hit the road, quite frankly. All right, so... Uh, Oh, yeah, Philip, people want from Venice. They, I love that picture, by the way, Philip. They, they want cruise ships to come, to stop coming so close to carbon monoxide readings on the lagoon at Venice. Get as high as downtown in a major city at rush hour. It stinks. So, okay, let's look at some of these articles I found. All right? Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think I'm dehydrated. I need to put my water closer. All right, so I think I'm a bit dehydrated, but let's go for it. I'm going to pull up the next one. And as long as we got some nice background. Mm -mm -mm. Let's move on, man. Nice background. And uh, all right, let's go. We really don't want to look at them anymore. So I found this one article here. And uh, let's see if I can pull my own ass up. Let's see how this works today. Okay. Where should I go? Should I go to the top? Should I go to the bottom? <laughs> All right. Cruise ship pollution. This is from a, 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 what is it? Geeky Explorer. And it was from 2019. 23 minute read time. Well, you know, we're not going to read this for 23 minutes, but they've got a lot of stuff and and i have it in the show notes so it is no denying that one of the worst offenders to the planet is the travel industry and with numbers of tourism breaking records year after year it's nothing but a growing problem except for this year of course this was written pre-pandemic so there's going to be a few changes so Fortunately, we can and we should make smart choices about the way we travel. Out of all the choices we can do for our vacations, one of the worst ones we can do is take a cruise ship. 
They're ocean-going titans. They emit mind-bending quantities of carcinogenic air pollution. Not only this, but they are operated by cantankerous corporations who are willing to cut dangerous corners. Pfft. Don't believe me, he says. Don't believe me? Eh? Read on. So we're going to read on. Okay. So we you set sail. And rem it, this guy writes, he says, I, I don't understand the appeal of cruise ships. You know, being stuck on a floating block of cells with thousands of strangers and, you know, spend the day eating, drinking, and standing in long lines with limited time to escape to see new places <laughs> is my definition of prison. Prison or hell. Absolutely. Prison or hell. So, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do something today, but I'm not going to do it. I forgot to put, you know what? I put my name in this son of a bitch here. God forbid somebody doesn't know who I am. Wait. Okay. Let's see how big it's going to be. All right, we'll make it smaller. <laughs> I forgot to put me in here. You could tell I'm just in a mood. I'm glad I could come live and I'm glad I have you. You know, I'm really glad I have all of you. Okay, so this is quite a long article, but it's a pretty good one. So when he read this, his jaw dropped. Ships owned by Carnival Corporation, right? By Carnival Corporation, emit 10 times more so than all European cars. Wow. Look at that. And they're disgusting. I mean, we all know what they look like. We all know how, let's see, I got a couple of pictures to, to, throw up but you know something all my pictures went away something happened oh wait I think I know what I did no you know when you're trying to learn how to use all this crap I lost all of my pictures I lost all of my overlays <gasps> my goodness I don't know how that happened but it doesn't matter we're gonna do the show without all my goddamn overlays what does it matter I don't need all the toys did I even lose my name <laughs> I lost my name. <gasps> I'm going to lose. Well, now nah, I'm staying to stick with the same old name. Okay. So here, so 2017 Carnival was the world's biggest operator of the luxury cruises. Emitted more sulfur dioxide around Europe's coasts than all, absolutely all of Europe's cars multiplied by 10. Hi, Kamishwari Kate. She took a three-night repositioning ship cruise in October of 2019. First and last ever. My husband got sick. I fasted and took herbs. Well, you were the smart one, Chicky. You were definitely a smart one. I just didn't like it. I, I, I don't know. Just yuck. All right. So cruise ships supposed to be safe from guilt, noise, dare I say pollution, secular cloisters where you can hide away, immune to the goings on of the big, bad world and the angst that is the byproduct of being alive. Boy, that's true. Where you can, you can tuck into a bottomless shrimp buffet while floating on it, the serene azure without a care in the world. Well, wrong. Cruise ship pollution is off the charts in all of its shapes and forms. Waste, sewage, air, and visual pollution. And that's why I feel the right to share how vicious they can be in harming our planet. Even if I'm not a role model in terms of environmental practices at an individual level, there are worse, much worse offenders out there that need to be stopped. But... We're talking about this tonight. Particle emissions, it's all out in the air. Emissions from a large cruise ship compared to the equivalent number of cars. Look at that, CO2. This is a pretty good article. It's in the show notes if we don't finish it. 
uh, and then the NOx and the particle emission. So it's pretty heavy duty. It's pretty heavy duty. They uh, their 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 pollution problems are supersize as themselves, actually. So every day, well before COVID, cruise ships worldwide emit the same particular matter as a million cars. That's like insane. It's insane. Jeez. A single large, I'm so pissed I lost my pictures. A single large cruise ship. It actually, what did it say? Um, all that ultra fine particle shit, sulfur dioxide. It's just disgusting. Put it that way. Let's say just, okay, it is quite disgusting. Like the, like the title. It's quite disgusting. Mm-hmm. Quite disgusting. So, research. Look at that. Four times more CO2 per passenger than flying. It's just like really sickening, gross. And I guess I didn't need all my pictures because we can see them right here. Yep. Poppy says she thinks the cruise industry is going to tank. You know what? I hope so. I really do. You know, even even to take those ships, right? Can you even turn them into anything that people could live in, like homeless? No, because they're so closed in and they rely, even if they were birthed in, in a bay or whatever, they've still got all that sewage. Oh, and that's a whole other thing we're going to get to. Holy shit. Yes, they did get stimulus money. That's another thing. They got stimulus money, but look at them. They're so hideous. Oh, here we go. Sewage. Shall we talk about it? Nah. I don't want it either, but it's important. Just how much sewage do 3,000 people produce in a week? It's almost 800 cubic meters. And there's a bunch of other gross waste products as well, so he's going to break it down. Gray water. This is the non-biological waste fluid from kitchens, sinks, showers, and cleaning. Not the worst, but certainly quite icky. Black water, the actual human waste. Given the quantity of shrimp consumed per day on an average cruise liner, very icky indeed. Solid waste. These are the kind of items you might try to recycle at home, but which are typically incinerated on a cruise ship. Cardboard, plastics, cans, glass. Yeah. Where does the incineration ash go? Oh yeah, into the ocean. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, I've got some stuff to show you after we look at this. There are also various hazard wastes produced by onboard activities like photo processing, equipment cleaning, and dry cleaning. And there is bilge water and ballast water, which both of which contain pollutants of varying levels of toxicity. Okay, where again? Where does all it go? You guessed it. The only regulation for a cruise ship to dump the sewage is to be three nautical miles from the shore. This can easily contaminate, contaminate sensitive ocean waters where marine life thrives and where even swimmers go for their holidays. It's disgusting. And it's still allowed. This is still allowed. Oh my God. This drives me out of my mind. All right, so, okay, so really, what happens to the waste? Really? Look at the size of these fuckers. Oh my God, I'm so sorry I'm thirsty like crazy. I might have to get up and go get some more. Look at that. So waste is supposed to be treated, separated, sterilized before being incinerated if it's solid or put into the ocean if it's liquid. But the only problem is, obviously, these cruise liners are operated by gigantic corporations. And they want to make as much money as possible. Right? They want to make as much money as possible, so they just cut corners all over. And there does seem to be a running theme here, huh? Right? Several cruise lines have been charged with releasing thousands of gallons of oily waste or gray water straight into the ocean. And trust me, I got for you. I got for you. I have a lot. Of course, we can't go through the whole thing, but I will show you the fines. 
and they still keep floating on still keep floating on so they got um they were you know they but they get a slap of bad cruise ship and you know they could say well all those jobs for people all over the world all those jobs 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 again they can be different jobs definitely can be different jobs so one of the worst cruise operators for the environment in 2019 was carnival and they racked up fines of 60 60 million for the conspiracy and obstruction of justice and even lying to the u.s coast guard about secretly discharging huge amounts of oil waste and plastics into the sea and there is video evidence for everyone to see let's see i don't think that i'm going to be able to play it but i could try you're not going to hear it you'll never hear it but let's see Somebody was taking the video and, oh, look, oh, okay. You can't hear him, right? Cause I never figured this out, but they were just, that's what they were talking about. All the shit. Look at the stuff. Just throw it over, throw it over, throw it over. So that's what they did. Threw it over and, uh, okay. That's what they did. And they were found to do it. Oh, there was a uh, mysterious brown fluid running from the showers to the ship's medical facility. High levels of chlorine in the ship's recreational waters. <laughs> Bagels and bread covered in flies in the salad bar. Oh, God. Improperly sanitized food equipment. Something that they called a visible film on top of the water of the main swimming pool. It's disgusting. So, do we all want to go on a cruise ship? That's why I was so pissed off at uh, the radio host, Tom Hartman. I really like him. He's extremely brilliant. He's a writer. He's just phenomenal. But Tom Hartman was taking his listeners on a fucking cruise. And I wrote to him. I said, what the hell are you doing, Tom? You're sitting here being a climate crusader and you're taking your people on a cruise. That really annoyed me. That was like, what kind of double standard is that? Tom Hartman. I didn't like it. Nope. I did not like that. Listen, I want to try something again and I don't understand my, why my stuff, but you guys are having a good time over there in the chat. While you're doing that, I am going to get my name back because something's happening with my goofy software and I want my name on here. And I know that you guys are having a good time. Let's see. What what should I make my name look like next? Should it be that? Yeah. And we'll make it green again. And we'll put it, I don't know. We'll put it there. That's fun. You know, you can play with, you can play with the, you can play with this, the stuff. It's software. I have a lot of fun with it. Okay. So let's get back to where we were. He goes through air quality. A rising concern. Your carbon footprint approximately triples while cruising. Not only this, but the air you breathe on the deck might be as bad as the world's most polluted cities. Holy shit. The uh, British TV show Dispatches went undercover and found that the air on the upper deck of Oceana was found to have 84 thousand ultra fine particles per cubic centimeter you know these numbers are only found in cities like delhi or shanghai and are more than double of london's busy piccadilly Cir uh, circus intersection which had less just thirty-eight thousand four hundred. no ultra fine particles <gasps> breathe it in guys just breathe it in hey tcr Hey, TCR. Yeah, listen, Mark says he didn't know about that. And I, he's not. Tom Hartman's not a clueless moron. He is not. He is an author. He is brilliant. But he made a big mistake, and it was kind of hypocritical. And I wrote to him. I told him that. I thought it was goddamn hypocritical. But I'm not. I, I don't want to put him down because, man, I've learned so much from the guy. 
and say what you want, you know, oh, he shilled for the Democrats, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. The guy is still brilliant, and he writes books that are second to none. And he just made a huge faux pas with the whole cruise ship thing. So that's all I'll say about it. Um, all right, so let's go into the visual pollution. It's also hurtful to the eyes. I'd say that. Look at that. This is in Venice. It dwarfs Venice. It's disgusting. They're so, it's so ugly. Who wants to go on these things? Ugh, I don't. I don't. Okay. So we don't even think about that, but really visual. Who wants a massive floating city city to literally invade the ports of towns and islands and spoil the view? Well, I guess the people that want to make money off the tourists. It's a big thing with the uh, tourism. Uh, that's, and and I, I do think it's a vicious circle because tourism is, I think it's funny money. I think tourism is a thing you know, maybe not like tourism where you are hiking somewhere or you're doing something natural. You're not destroying things. You're not uh, uh, going somewhere and just buying, you know, and consuming and all. It, it's a conundrum, but not this kind of tourism. We got to change the way we think. We can't be having capitalistic tourism anymore. It's got to change. Got to change. You know, whether or not I think it's going to change. It's got to change. We'll see. So here we go. The biggest cruise ship of all. A virtual tour of sympathy. Symphony. Uh, sympathy, huh? That might have been um, a little faux pas there. Okay. It's like a roller coaster ride in its own right. This sea giant launched in 2018. It's the length of of 30 double-decker buses. A sixth longer than the Shard. <laughs> its signature feature, an open-air garden aptly named Central Park, required extensive clay engineering. The ship is manned by a crew of 2,200, and it is much, much bigger than the Titanic. So 2,200 people have jobs, and that's the big thing. They say it is the... It is the tourist industry it's giving them jobs but are these are they meaningful i mean some people say oh yes we get to travel the world and we meet the most wonderful people and oh it's just great but what did they do before these big monmouth cruise ships gotta go back babe gotta go back so why are they polluting well they run on diesel engines gas turbines or both they are um they frequently burn fuel oil, which contains 2,000 times as much sulfur oxides as regular diesel. To be clear, sulfur oxide is carcinogenic, which is Greek for really fucking bad. <laughs> Burning diesel fuel also emits nitrous, nitrogen oxide, which has been linked to lung cancer. Again, carcinogens, very bad. Often, they run their engines in the harbor to avoid paying shoreside taxes on electricity. <laughs> Thus, they produce a smorgasbord of air pollutants simply by being. It also produces sulfur, which, if you mix it with water and air, it makes sulfuric acid. That's bad acid. That's bad acid. That's bad acid rain. It kills fish and corals and trees and dolphins. And basically, it harms just about anything you can picture David Attenborough posing for a selfie with. So why don't they use cleaner fuel? Huh? Well, simply put, cleaner fuel is more expensive. So the cruise lines, they cheat. They use scrubbers to wash the fuel so that it passes regulations. Well, this does mean that new, cleaner fuel meets environmental standards. The ships in question are often using open loop scrubbers. They discharge the pollutant waste, i.e. the shit they scrubbed off the dirty fuel, directly into the ocean immediately after wiping it off the original fuel. 
So in other words, it does precisely jack all to reduce the pollutant aspect of the cruise liner. Quite rightly, there has been a coordinated international backlash against using the scrubbers. And actually, I don't know what's happened this year. It's probably been a completely non-issue because COVID has had all of the, you know, the front page news here. And that's what I was, I started with the suicides on the ships because the workers were, they were forced to stay in their little rooms and they had, they didn't get paid. They had to buy their booze. I mean, these, these, these gazillion dollar companies really suck. They let these people, I mean, they, they stopped paying them because of the pandemic when they couldn't get them home. But then the cruise companies were whining and bitching and saying they spent 300 million in total getting the, the workers home to the, all the different countries all over the world. Boo hoo, cry me a river. Or me a fucking river. <sighs> Man. So as a result, Norway, Ireland, Russia, Singapore, and China have ban the use of scrubbers in their waters over fears of dangerous pollution. But international rules, they're not strictly enforcing. Hmm. See a country missing there? What do you think? Is there a country missing? U.S. of A. U.S. of A. So we'll have to look a little bit more into that. Now, cruise ship squeeze the new pirates of the seven seas right all right that's an ad man you know even well actually it says dig deep into the industry that makes billions but play oh all right but pays pennies uh with a high cost to the planet too you know what it's you can't even tell sometimes what the fuck is an ad and what's not because there's just always so much so many ads they're horrible too. Wait, there's more. Dirty water and air. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Just the tip. For the sake of posterity, it is also important to note that cruise ships have a plethora of other unsavory crosses to bear from blatant flouting of em environmental law. Uh, let's see. Booze-fueled violent brawls that resulted in sev severe injuries. More than 500 sexual assaults of women and girls on Royal C Caribbean ships since 2016. Onboard blazes. Big one. Deliberate tax evasion by incorporating companies in foreign countries. So he suggests reading Ross Klein's Cruise Ship Squeeze. Okay, so I'm going to finish with this one and I want to go to the next one because I think that you're going to find this pretty interesting. This is a guy that compiled all of these finds. Wow. I mean, this is a phenomenal amount of work. So let's look at this. Uh, I... Let me see if it's big enough for you. If it's not big enough, I'll make it big enough somehow. Okay. Let me see. Well, we're not going to go through the entire whole thing. We're just going to look at June 19th. I mean, this this guy goes all the way back to... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, wow. Look at this. All the way back to March 1992. And we can start there, and it's all of them. So it's all of them. It doesn't matter what name it is. It's all of them. It's sewage, oil discharge, plastic and garbage, dumping of plastic uh, uh, bags and garbage off Florida, and oil discharge, plastic. I mean, the same shit, okay? But all these years, and they get a $3,000 fine back in 1994, Oil, plastic, oil, discharge, spill, discharge, dumping, paint spill, uh, pollution, oil, discharge, plastics, and garbage, oil, 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 fuel, oil, damage to a reef. That was in 96. That was Holland, America. They dragged an anchor across a thousand meters of Soto's Reef in the Cayman Islands. Those fucking morons. And what did they get for that? What did they get for that? They don't, we don't know what the fine was. They don't, it, he couldn't get the information. Um, Queen Odyssey, 
1996, one gallon of fuel, and they got a $250 fine. Okay, so that was a, a little one, but it's all, oh, here's another one, a million dollars, the Leeward, the Leeward, December 1997. A Norwegian cruise line damaged the Great Mayan Reef near Cozumel. More than 4,400 square feet <gasps> had been shaved off, 80% destroyed. Oh, a million dollar fine. Think about the million dollar fine. Is a million dollars anything compared to what they destroyed? And permanently, they permanently destroyed this reef off of Cozumel. Got off cheap, million bucks, million dollars, back in 1996. Okay, hey Karen, yeah, she surprised I'm on. Karen, I need to keep myself very engaged, and uh, I'm here, engaged, and I hope I'm engaging you guys. So we'll go through some more of these. Here's a uh, 1999. Okay, this is a biggie, 18 million. So three, 3.5 million designated for the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation and two and a half million to the National Park Foundation. This was oil discharge, discharge of hazardous waste and falsifying records. The grandeur of the seas, the majesty of the seas, the monarch of the seas, the Nordic empress, the Nordic prince, song of America, song of Norway, sovereign of the seas, sun viking, all Royal Caribbean cruises. The company pled guilty in six jurisdictions to charges of fleet-wide practices of discharging oil-contaminated waste regularly and routinely discharging without a permit wastewater contaminated by pollutants, pollutants through its ship's gray water systems and making false... Gee, you wonder? False? What? A ship company? Material statements to the Coast Guard. These practices occurred fleet-wide into 1995 and occurred on one ship as late as 1998. Among the violations supporting this guilty plea were repeated oil discharges from the Nordic Prince into the waters of Alaska inside at the inside passage during 1994. Jurisdictions Miami, New York, Los Angeles, Anchorage, Puerto Rico, so the disrespect goes on and on and on and on. Somebody here wants a poll on um, Vax or no Vax. We're kind of like not even that kind of channel, but, you know, we talk about everything, but we don't take a position. It's up to you. And we don't, we don't really like support theories. I won't go into conspiracies. It's really a personal thing. So you want to ask, go ahead. And if people want to answer, go right ahead. So let's go for this. So in 2000, there's another, but these were little things. Air pollution. This was air pollution. Carnival cruise lines, celebrity cruises, crystal cru It was cited for violating Alaska's state smoke opacity standards. When they were docked in Jonau, Jonau between mid-July and August. So that is, um, that's 2000. So let's go all the way. Let's keep going. And wow, from 2008, they're still pending for air pollution and wastewater violation for the, it, the Juno Empire, Empire uh, reports the ship violated the Norwegian Pearl. So all of these, I see. This is like just going to go on and on. Seems like an open lawsuit. So why does Alaska let them in there? Hmm, I wonder. 2009, the Island Princess, Princess Cruises. The Juno report, Empire reports the ship was cited for one air quality violation in Alaska during the 2008 cruise season. But they give them a little tiny, you know, slap in the hand. 32,500 contingent on no violations in 2010. Big deal big deal a lot of these are still pending and this is old i mean we're talking over 2000 this is over 10 12 years all right still pending 
Oh my God. And this guy, this, this guy that's compiled this, this is, he's, oh my Lord. Wow. 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 I'm sorry, but unknown and pending and uh, air quality in Alaska, the ship was cited for air quality violations. All these are. It's like ongoing. It's never going to stop. <clears throat> Let's see, eighty thousand dollars. Let's see what the eighty thousand dollar was. He stopped in nineteen, so I'm I'm interested uh, to see this as we as it gets continued. The carnival. Oh no, maritime executive reports the Norwegian Maritime Authority has fined Greek cruise ship operator Global Cruise Lines Limited a total of eighty thousand dollars for using a 0.17 percent sulfur fuel in a 0.10 percent sulfur ECA zone in March new Norwegian this is 19 new Norwegian environmental requirements for emissions in several projected fjords um, God I am not going there with the names entered into force Tefjord oh well, maybe Sunny's Fjord? No, I'm horrible. I'm not going to embarrass myself. The fine for global cruise lines is the first issued in connection with the new stricter rules. On April 16th, the NMA received reports about smoke emissions from the cruise ship Magellan, which was berthed in Flam. It's just terrible. I'm not even going to read the whole thing. But these, here, the, but the biggest one was the tw in June 19th, the $20 million. Violate probation, discharge of plastics, and more. Does anybody remember that one? That's a big one. Carnival fined $20 million for violating its uh, probation for environmental of offenses that led to a $40 million fine in, uh, in 2016. They logged, Carnival logged 800 offenses of its conditions of probation in the first year. Many of these, such as discharging of plastics, is even worse than the original offense, leading to the 40 million fine. But looking at it from Carnival's perspective, the 60 million total in fines, <laughs> it's about 0.7% of their total profit on which they pay no corporate income tax, okay? That fine is similar to a person earning $100,000 being fined $700. Kind of tickles your feet rather than a slap on the wrist. So we see the cruise industry is horrible. Absolutely horrible. And I just wanted to bring light to it. There's some research here I can't go into because I've been on for a while uh, from this is one corporation to pollute them all luxury cruise uh air emissions in europe and this is just air and it is uh by transport and environment and it was published in june of 2019 basically it's a study to analyze air pollution by luxury crew cruise ships so I have the link in there, and this is long, so we're, of course we're not going to go there. And I have one more, and that was uh, actually Forbes. Forbes. And Forbes is the big money magazine. Hi, Pat Unruh. Cool. Add her. That was the, um, okay, so here we are. Cruise ship pollution is causing serious health and environmental problems. That's Forbes. Steve Forbes, the libertarian, you know, big money people. But they're talking about the, the that in what was it 2017 they made 117 billion and probably hid from all. Can you imagine if the cruise ships that that flew that would fly under an American flag paid the taxes that they should to the United States? But they fly these flags. They fly under flags of all these other countries and they don't pay shit can you imagine what could be done for homeless in this country or to even fix infrastructure to to work on changing our economy around not to be this economy that we have now that's a lot of money and yeah robert the pricks got bailed out they got stimulus money don't don't we live in we live in a clusterfuck i'm sorry but this article, just the last one, 
They were talking about this and uh, nations strive to reduce their CO2 emissions and companies come under pressure to decrease their carbon footprint. The maritime industry is also going under scrutiny. Now, commercial shipping has always been at the center, but now it's cruise ships and it's cities, the cities that they dock in. Look at that picture. Uh, 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 uh. Leisure and pollution, floating cities, blah, blah, blah. Same old shit, just a different, but it's Forbes. So it's, it's pretty interesting that it's Forbes. Um, all right, so. I think that's been a good conversation. I, I haven't seen what a lot of you were talking about. So let's let's look at uh, this little Phillips here, chicken patty. Hi, Osama. I started early tonight. I don't know if this was successful or not, but I wanted to try 7 o'clock. You know, I did 9 o'clock. I have been doing 8 o'clock and now 7 o'clock. Uh, 7 o'clock's not bad, but we'll see. Hi, Rich Diana. Hi, Osama. Yeah, Pat, this is so cool. My friend, Pat Unruh, who I sent some masks to when the whole mess started. <laughs> Scott Andrews is here. Shitsy, you're awesome. You're awesome. Be right back. The cruise ships are, are devils. Yeah, they are. They certainly are. And uh, to end the show tonight, let's see. Did I bring any more music in? I think I'm going to use the same song that I had to start. It's a pretty good song. I want to thank you for coming. Let's see. Hi, TCR. It was a good show tonight. Cruise ships poop on the devil. <laughs> Don't they? Don't they, though? Thank you, Kim, for coming and being my mod. So many people die, so many rapes, so many disappeared. Christine, yeah, we, we talked about that before. Billy Joe, what'd you say? There was one cruise ship that was going to be for nudists. Thought that might be interesting. Okay, run around. Let me, let me add that to the broadcast. Run around naked on a cruise ship. Yeah, TCR, baby. We live in a backward, we live in a backwards, bizarro world. We sure as shit do. And I, I, I'm telling you, I don't think it's going to change in my lifetime. I don't know. Not in my lifetime. Maybe my kid's lifetime. I don't know. Yeah, the planet has a fever. <laughs> mm, let's see. You guys are talking about uh, McConnell and all that. The, I'm not even going into politics tonight. Let's see. Aw, TCR, thank you. Rich, what are you saying? There's a show called Cruise Ship Killers. Holy crap. Must mean there's enough to supply the show. Oh, God. Another one of those shows? Holy crap. Wow. Well, listen. It is the last... Well, tomorrow's the last day. And, uh... I wasn't going to do a show on New Year's Eve. I'll tell you what, I don't have much going on. And I don't know. If I come on, it's, it's a lonely life, huh? But I'm never lonely. I'm never lonely. I never feel lonely, and I'm never lonely. I just want to thank you for all coming tonight at 7 o'clock. It's going to feel weird to end so early. But, um... Thank you for joining me. It's been a heck of a 2020, huh? And we've all gone through it together, and we've got the videos on our channel to prove it. <laughs> Kate, you're welcome. Nice gathering. Yeah, it is. It is. Oh, whale watching is cruel. They harass the whales. It's all cruel. <sighs> it's all cruel. Billy, the planet has to change. Let's hope for the best. Well, hopium is not going to help. It's action like uh, Extinction Rebellion. It's action. And I had the picture that I have on the, um, on the, the, uh, the thumbnail. That's from Extinction Rebellion when they were like protesting the, uh, God, I forgot what it was, the ship. It was just cool as heck. And 
that's what we need more of. Extinction Rebellion, I, you know what, I don't care what anybody says, I think they got it right because they're out there doing something. Same with the Sunrise Movement, but Extinction Rebellion, man, they got it going on. And if I was more a uh, healthy person, I might do more. There is an Extinction Rebellion near me in Buffalo, though. So, oh, Sam, I love you too. Ah, yep, here's to the nude boat. <laughs> Come sail away. Oh, yeah. Okay. Kim, you're cooking a ham? Oh, boy. Big ham. Oh, the audio sounds good. Yeah, I got some good music I picked tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna. I don't. Oh, Unru lives alone. You can live alone and not be lonely. And you can live with someone and be miserable. Extinction Rebellion is great. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, guys. I'm not just going to talk to the, for the sake of hearing my voice. Happy New Year. Thanks for being with us all 2020. The shitty ass year. Yeah, TCR, gold world gone bad. I'll end with that. Thank you. I really don't even know what more to say. Just thank you. We're going to do it again in 2021. I could do this till I drop dead.